Good morning, everyone. My name is Jennifer Alfaro, and today I'll be presenting my research, which is titled Preparation and Characterization of Multifunctional Nanofibers Containing Polyacrylonitrile and Polyethylene Glycol. My mentor for this research project was Dr. Ramazan Asmatulu from the Mechanical Engineering Department at Wichita State University. Carbon dioxide is one of the main gases uh, causing global warming, and as their economy is growing, there's an increasing amount of carbon dioxide being released into the atmosphere. The idea of converting this gas into renewable energy is very innovative and beneficial for our people. However, there's a lot of industries opposing to it because they benefit from fossil fuels. This research will be presenting the fabrication of nanofibers that can be used for the capturing of carbon dioxide. For this research project, I made eight nanofibers, which are divided in four categories. The first one had an absence of PEG in respect to PEN, so that means 0% PEG. The other three were 5, 10, and 20% um, presence of PEG in respect to PEN. Each of those nanofibers went through three different tests. The Fourier Transfer Infrared Analysis, FTIR, the Water Angle Contact Test, and the scanning electron microscope test, also known as SEM. These tests will be later explained in my presentation. To prepare the nanofibers, I use the electrospinning technique. The electrospinning technique allows the nanofibers to have a high surface area in respect to their volume. For the electrospinning machine, we used a syringe pump, which was pumping the nanofiber solution at two millimeters per hour a direct current supply that would polarize the syringe needle and the collector. My collector in this case was aluminum foil. As you can see in the graphic on the left, the, electro the fibers are electrospone in a circular motion. My first test was the F FTIR test uh, mentioned before. The FTIR test uh, measures how much a solid a liquid, and sometimes even a gas, can absorb light. As you can see on the picture on the right, there's the graphs of wave numbers versus the percentage of absorbance. Um, as you can notice, there's some peaks, and those peaks represent different uh, functional groups. On the left side, I have a table showing my nanofiber compositions and the results for the FTIR test. For my 0% PEG nanofiber, I had alkanes, nitriles, and nitrogen-hydrogen bonds. For, for my 5% PEG in respect to PEN in a fiber, I had carbonyl bonds, nitriles, nitrogen-oxygen, alkene-methyl group, and bending alkene. My 10 and 20% nanofibers were similar in respect to their functional groups. They showed nitrogen groups, nitriles, amines, aromatics, and alkanes. My second test was a water contact angle test. This test measures uh, how much a surface can absorb a liquid. This case is water. The picture on the left shows um, the schema that I used to determine if my nanofiber was hydrophobic, meaning it wouldn't absorb water, or hydrophilic, if it would absorb water. Left, uh, the left side shows a super hydrophilic um, characteristic that has an angle of less than five degrees that could be achieved in 0.5 seconds. On the right side, we have a superhydrophobic nanofiber, which would have an angle of 150 to 180 degrees. In my next slide, you can actually see the results for my 20% PEG nanofiber. On the right-hand side picture, you can see that the angle of the water droplet is less than 5 degrees, and this was achieved in 0.56 seconds. On the left-hand side of my slide, you can see the nanofiber actually absorbing the water droplet before it's even released from the needle. My last test was, was a SEM test. The scanning electron micro, microscope test uses electrons to magnify the image and charges up the nanofibers. On the left-hand side, we have a 20% PEG in respect to PEN nanofiber. You can see that there's thicker fibers and there's larger beads. There's also some lighter spots, and that might mean there are two things. One, that there's another chemical present in the nanofiber, 
and two, that the electrons charge the nanofibrin. On the right hand side, you actually see the 5% peg in respect to pan nanofiber. The fibers are thinner and there's more beads in it. That means that there's pan in the nanofiber. As discussed earlier, my FDIR test showed fibers with present peaks in multiple regions, but the most important one would be the nitrogen, hydrogen bonds and amines. And amines. Results for the water contact angle test were limited due to complications in testing. Mentioned before, they were absorbing the water droplet pretty quick. However, we can conclude that my nanofibers were super hydrophilic. To summarize, Carbon-nitrogen bonds belong to the nitrile functional group, and they're present in my nanofibers containing PEG and PEN from the FDIR test. Amine-bearing nanofibers have a high capacity for capturing uh, carbon dioxide. The reason for this is that after the carbon dioxide and the amines have been mixed, they can be separated uh, with a reversible uh, reaction. Lastly, we for further development of this research, we need more uh, support from government agencies and industries to fully develop this technology and roll it out in a large scale. Future work for, for this research will be look at combining metal organic frames, also known as MOFs, with replicates of my pen and peg solutions. After these three chemicals have been combined, they will be used to fabricate nanofibers and capture carbon dioxide. The way that this works is that they have gaps in the nanofibers where the gas molecules would go, go in. After the carbon dioxide have been, has been captured, they're going to be uh, creating biofuel. Our recommendation for future research on this work is also studying the economical aspects more in depth because MOS are very expensive. Thank you, and I'm ready for any questions. Here are my references. So uh, a hypothesis is that the 20% PEG and PEN nanofiber would be the best solution. And the reason why, it's because they have a high surface area where the gas molecules can fit. Uh, the production of biofuel from the carbon dioxide in this nanofiber, they would actually be combining other chemicals with these nanofibers to subtract that carbon dioxide. So as mentioned earlier, um, the amine functional group, uh, you can do a reversible action. So pretty much combining two chemicals and then reverting that reaction before of the combination of nano, the nanofiber and carbon dioxide. Yes, but I'm not sure which ones. Um, I see a lot of potential in this project and I'm really passionate about uh, the environment. However, I think I would like to move on to different projects. <laughs>